am I done? 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 Every day, am I done? Am I done? So it's tough because I don't know really what I'm feeling right now. I mean, I feel a lot of positives, but the sport, that's, like I said, for a while, just physically, when I needed to be ready physically, my mental failed me. You know, now I'm mentally ready and my physical's failing me. My whole life, gents, run that way, okay? Gents, wrestle this guy. Gents, put this on. Gents, go over there, okay. All right, now I need you to work hard, all right. That's my life. I've been coached and trained, and, you know, so I'm trying to figure things out for myself a little bit. I'm lost, man. I look at shit all the time, like, what the hell is this? I think the glory just brought more problems in my world. And then for a while, I just tried to run away from all of it. I just wanted to crawl into a hole and just be left alone. You know, and just put off the side and just, man, forgive me. Fans don't understand how much I love them and I appreciate them, you know, because it's their cheers, it's their applause, it's their gratitude. It's their taking two seconds out of their day to tell me that I affected them. That makes it worth it, you know, because in my mind, I don't know, you know. I ain't worth shit. I always tell people, I'm, yeah, but you're just poor. I'm like, so? This is, this is my last march, this is it. And uh, I owe it to myself and all the, just the bunk things I've been through. I owe it to myself to go out there and give it 100% one time, no excuses. I got the family of my dreams. I have everything I want in front of me. And you know what, unfortunately, they've seen me lose four times in a row. Four times in a row, my family's been through enough. It's time to step up and do something about it. I ain't disappointed in me. Fans might have given up on me, but that's because they don't know me. You don't walk in my shoes, man. You don't know the other side of my life. I was fighting to change the name. The name Jens Pulver was an alcoholic, junk, wife-beating, child-abusing POS who threw away everything. That was Jens Pulver. That's my dad's name. He's named Jens Pulver. I was the reason to put excitement in my brother's face, to put a smile on my mother's eyes. That's why I fought. I never fought for fame. I never fought for money. I fought because I was the reason that our family could hold themselves up high. And I was the reason that we could all cheer for being a pulver, because we didn't have too many reasons.
This is the second half. This is the biggest battle to me. And this first fight is that road back. It's that to tell myself, nah, I'm not done. Not even close. I'm not fighting for any other reason right now but for myself. This fight's for me. Oh man, when we were kids, me and Abel still laugh about it, man. I love that little son of a bitch, man. My brother Abel. I love Dustin, but like I said, he's basically he's been off in a far off land since he was about 16. So he's a phone call and a letter. Um, I remember this, man. A fucking suburban and the blue truck. Red suburban and the blue truck. Big old red suburban. Goddamn blue Chevy. And as the bus, we would drive by our driveway and then we'd stop at the bus stop. <laughs> the three, all three of us, as we drive by our driveway, fuck, it's the blue truck. We ain't going home, because that's my dad. So we just take off out in the woods for hours. We ain't going home. Every day, every fucking day, man. Got beat up for something. I remember when I was trying to learn how to ride the bike and I had the training wheels on. And the first time, I just couldn't pedal it. I remember picking myself up off the fucking road dizzy. I didn't know up, down, I didn't know in between. He got frustrated and just belasted me. It's terrible, that was my life, man. This guy just come in and fucking can't even eat dinner. Can't even watch a TV show if he's having a bad day. I think that's why my mom, no matter what, man, even if she was m missing a leg, she'd cauterize that shit and make sure we got to our wrestling tournament. That was our only out, man. That was our only fucking out. It's going to the wrestling tournament and competing. Fucking up. So, yeah, that's good. Just line up, do what he's calling, and then hook his, hook his hand out of the way. Yeah, okay. Hook his hand out of the way or climb over. Try and time the part, time over with the same man. I don't care if it's even a time over with your jab, but then follow up. Okay? No more. So you need the jab and you need to move your feet. Okay? Squeeze it, I didn't give him. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. use, use your jab. I'm going right back to that flat foot of bullshit. Use, use your feints, use your feints. Yeah, yeah but he, he, he only used like a couple feints, fucking twice the whole round. Blow I'm crowding out people in the end. Yeah, I want I'm break, thinking. I want to break his feet down. We go bop, 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 walk through that lower leg. Walk through that, walk through his base. We just try to box. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Kick in, juke out. against the rest of the world, you guys. Understand that. You guys it's are making Idaho. each other better. It's Idaho. We have sound in Idaho. You guys are making each other better. Let's see it. Being from different teams, you guys, let's do a team on three. Team on three, okay? Ready? Nice and loud. Ready? One, two, three. Team! How you doing? Good? What's up, Jens? Come on. Don't let the beer cool you. I actually I cleaned up nicely. Nice. How you doing? You all right? You guys listen yeah, to us. What up, man? What's up, man? Totally. How you doing, man? There's me and there's my brother, Dustin. I was in the sixth grade. He was in the fifth grade. And we started wrestling and doing athletics. And I would say by the eighth grade, Dustin, man, he, he was done with me. Pretty soon we didn't see each other, we didn't even hang out anymore. 
and by 17 he went to he went to prison, and now he's going to spend the rest of his life in prison, 55 years. But there's me and my little brother. We wrestled, and more than that, we just kept the athletics. When I tell people wrestling saved my life, I'm serious. The reason it did is because it was that counterbalance. I had one guy telling me I was garbage. I had one guy telling me that I'm no good, I'm worthless, I'm meaningless, I suck. But then I had these coaches and these parents and mentors and they're cheering you on going, that's incredible, the hard work. Athletics always gave us that escape. Okay, we're getting beat on like crazy at home. It's a nightmare, it's cold, it sucks. But on Saturdays, we're at a wrestling tournament. Abel's wrestling hard, Jens is wrestling hard, and for the time, for the beginning, Dustin's wrestling hard, my brother, my mother's cheering, crowds are loving it, coaches are pumping us up, we're loving life, we're doing something positive. Then we gotta drive home, start off Sunday, exactly the same way we left on Friday. I think once in my life I had a broken heart, once, and it made me hate him even more. When I won the world title, it broke my heart. And I'm like, this is something that my dad should have been there. This is something you share with your father. That's why I hate him. I don't hate him for the punches. Shit, man, my ass healed. My legs healed, my face healed, my ribs healed, my hands healed. I hate him because he couldn't stay sober long enough. To love his own kids. I hate him that alcohol and cocaine and heroin and marijuana it was all more important than your son, who carries your name and who's completely embarrassed by you. I hate him for, because that's one thing I'll never, I'll never know. what it's like to have a relationship with your father. And he stole that from me. And no world title, no amount of wins, no state championships, no nothing would ever bring that back. People, man, did you change your mind about getting together? It's like, I don't even know what the hell you're talking about. I'm trying to open up the gym, fight of my life. My wife's been out of town, my son, my daughter's in Arizona. Do you remember? Yeah, sure. Take it personally, I guess. I can't <laughs> No, that's my exaggeration. She's been gone. 20 some days, and I've been crying like a little punk.
I'm gonna cry again. That's, the man, that's gonna piss her off. She ain't down to that PDA business. We figured it out, my mom taught me. I'm emotion, she's practical. That's why we get along. Two of me, oh, terrible. Yeah, man. And then I got this. Day in, day out. Anybody want to know what it's like to be in the locker room before a fight? Right? <laughs> ah, try to relax. It's like they know. It's like they all know Carson must have done something on this plane. If this is their plane, they're all looking. They're like, it's got to be the dad right there. Oh, shit. Look at it. Hey, Bob. How you doing? Huh? I'm crabby. I'm crabby. Are you crabby? Are you crabby? Are you kissing pants? Huh? Look at him. Look at him. How you doing? Got <laughs> yeah, what? Give me a hug, man. Play it. Look at it, now we're right back to normal. In 10 minutes, I carry and I follow. That's life, man, it's perfect. You want me to come get you? Carson. Go get Mr. Penguin. Hey. Carson. Get him. That's him. That's all day. It's sitting at that gym. Look at there goes this, there goes the sprawl. <laughs> you got him. You gonna come good? You got him. I gonna put two. Boy, get you up. Good. Zip. Back in the day, man, everybody always had that question. 
Muhammad Ali versus the wrestler. Who would win? This great wrestler. Could Muhammad Ali beat Jeff Blatnick? Could Jeff Blatnick beat Muhammad Ali? But how could you tell? One's great on this, one's great on this. Bruce Lee, he could, who could he fuck up? He's a striker, he's got some grappling. You know, all these different combative sports. Well, who'd be the best? Well, they're all different. How could we find out? Finally, somebody stepped in and said, I'll tell you what we do. Bring your stuff, man, bring your shit. If you want it on your feet, you better learn how to keep it there. And that's mixed martial arts, and it just started evolving, man. You know, I remember when Gracie hit seven with that triangle choke, nobody knew what in God's creation that was. We're like, what the f huh? So now we realized, oh shit, there's more to it than just holding them down and pounding them. There's actually things that can submit you. There's things that grab your limbs and break them. And that was jujitsu, and that's when that started taking off. Now wrestlers who love the ground started jumping into jujitsu. You know, you got Muay Thai come out with their shins and their kicks, and it just started evolving. Where if you want to be the guy like me, I was a wrestler. The wrestlers were the dictator. If I didn't want to get submitted, I wasn't going to let you take me down. So that was the game back then. That's why I was so good at it. I could dictate where the pace went, where the fight went, and I hit like a ton of bricks and I just jacked on people. I knew I was born to do this. First day I seen it. Watch Manny coach here and now, I'm like, this is it. This is exactly what I need. I get the box, which I always wanted to do, but if I don't like it, I'll take your ass down. I looked, made for me, made for me. I started it, pioneered it, built it, created the lighter divisions. I'm not lying when I tell you, this shit was made for me. I used to tell people all the time, you know, I love wrestling, but man, certain matches, shit would be different if I could throw a shot up in there. Thank God I wasn't the only one thinking that, because, damn, there's the sport. Just a grain of sale. We on short time. Short time. Yeah. I'm on a ticking time. They're gonna poke you. <laughs> I know. She makes this pie salad. And I she shreds it it's like the green papaya. Sauce in like little strips, and she gets these little tomatoes. And finds the hottest. See the thing about Thai chili peppers is, <clears throat> you never know. Sometimes it's they can be hotter than be damned. Sometimes it, it just depends on the batch, really. You know, that one burned. I mean, I, as I'm eating, I got dripping out my nose. I got tears coming from my eyes. Problem is, we eat it at night. Hot food, spicy food, is the best what? Thermogenic. It's like a walking colon cleanse. Because if you think about it, you eat something hot, you pretty much feel it the next day. Well, that's a good, for a guy who has 35 pounds of waste in him, cleansing that is huge. So, anyways, you get about an hour time limit, before it explodes, <laughs> I'm stuck here. And I feel it, I, mean, I feel it. 
Yeah, I have no idea since I married her, since I've been with her. I wake up, you know, grab my water and my coffee, off to the, to the gym. I make it about 30 minutes back home because I don't do public toilets, so I gotta go all the way back home. That's my papaya story. That's why we're sitting here laughing back and forth because <laughs> we know we're, I'm on a ticking time bomb. Oh, those are cute shoes. It's the makeover. Okay, so we go like this. I like, I love to And then you just. But I don't ever. I don't with your hands. Yeah, I love you, Ninja. So, Terry, you need a piece of this. No, yeah. It's got a loading dock. All right. Normally it's shredded. Life is about to change. Yeah, life's about to change. But you know what? Oh yeah. The damn thing is it tastes good. Problem. That's the problem. You wave hi. You say hey. You say hi to the camera. Huh? Carson. Wait, wait, Carson, ready? Ready? He's tired. Carson! Hi! <laughs> wait, he's got that mean look. Oh my god, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, I'm not going to embarrass her, but... Dear Mr. Pulver, thank you for letting me come to your gym. I would like to do workouts there. My dad told me you are a little evil, but I thought you were nice. <laughs> Can you please sign my gloves? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, man, that's cool. So you get things like that, man. Ah, that's cool. You ain't even give me a cry. Yeah, you come here, look at this, right? This is badass. This is from uh, Skinner's little daughter. Look at it, it's all colorful and stuff. Isn't that cool? Your daddy. <laughs> You like that? S I E R R A. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah, that, that makes it worth it, I tell you, huh? Today. That's a good that's a good day. You ready? Go! So you get with sting. Throw it hard as you can get on there with straight arms. That's it. Straight arms. Straight arms get on there. That's better. So control your throw. That's it. Don't hit your face. So control your throw so you can get right on there with post and arms. That's perfect. That's the one. Duplicate that. So grip it across with your core. Use your abs. Use your abs. Grip it across it. Come on, 10 seconds. Feel the last 10, so we don't stop. Let's get full range of motion. Boom, clear those thumbs, clear those thumbs, rip it up. Come on, come on. And rest, good job. Come on, don't fall outside. Slow, get there, get there. Quick hand switch, quick hand replacement. Quick hand replacement, quick hand replacement, non stop. Stay up on that plane the whole time. We need you up on that plane. Good. Stay up on that plane the whole time. Every time. Stay close to the bar. Throw a combo now. Throw a combo. Throw a combo. So yeah, go, 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 you know, go. people talk about hard, hard. Go, the losses. What, the, what have they done to you? The losses haven't hurt me. But they helped put me in that funk because what it did was made me... That's how much money I missed. I don't want to be rich, bling bling, all that, Jack, you know. I want to know my son can go to college. 
I want to know that my wife will be taken care of, that we can take care of her family, my family. What's up? We got 10 seconds. A couple more combos, then four more hops. Four more hops. Good, four hops. One. Three, stay positive. Rest. Good job, good job, good job. Stress, man. Effing stress. I'd love to be able to focus on fighting one time. I make sure I got next month's bills paid. So everybody's always, hey, you know, you got to focus on fighting. You gotta I, you're right, I do. I also got to make sure my wife, my kids, my food. Do it better than I did. kind of dying. I think it's all about the fact that I barely live month to month, you know? Barely. And all I want to do is open up a place like this and let it be funded so that all I got to do is take care of it, you know? Look out for kids. God, man, life is so short. You die. You could die at any minute. And to be remembered is one thing. Be remembered and appreciated. That's Martin Luther King, you know. That's that. Those are motivators. Those are mentors. Those are to be a protector. I mean, that's what Martin Luther King was, man. He was a mentor. He, he was a motivator. But above that, he was a protector. He protected everybody. He protected his race. You know what I mean? I don't. I don't have a race. I have a poverty level. I have sick, weak, handicapped, struggling, and I have those who want to take over and ruin this earth, crush it, pimp us out, give us our super stimulus package so our kids are going to get punished by it. You know, what do you do? This is an important fight. This is a must-win kind of fight. I'm still going to walk in here with torn up knee because I don't care. You know why? I got a must get some money. I got a must bill to pay. So, we'll be all right. What I say before, rich in life, son, I made a deal with the Lord. You give me my best friend. Someone that I can roll with every day, live with and love. And I'll be it. Jens Pulver grew up in an environment that few could imagine or even comprehend. At a young age, he was forced to endure challenges and experiences that will cripple most spirits. Yet even through intolerable verbal and physical abuse, Jens had the incomparable love of his mother and a steadfastness about him that would carry him through life's greatest obstacles. There is nothing to pretend about Jens Pulver. He is unvarnished, authentic, individualistic, raw, inspiring, he's maverick, emotional, non-conforming, unpredictable, at times a walking contradiction, and yet above all, he is real. Gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to our guest today, the UFC lightweight champion, the godfather of the 155 pound division, three-time mixed martial arts world champion, Jens Bolton. I really appreciate you letting me come here and sit down and 
chat with you, you know. Jens, let's get going. Yeah, for sure. You're here today to explain to us some of what you have been through in your life. Start off by letting us know what it was like growing up in a house with abusive relationships. Well, you know, all right, here's one thing I'm going to say before I get started. I'm laughing. Uh, I have a hard time talking about my brothers and my mom. I, I tend to cry. But, you know, I don't feel any weaker for doing it in front of you guys because there's just certain things that are dear to me that I love more than anything on this planet. So just bear with me if that happens. Um, I mean, when I was five, they tell us that my mom told the story. I was lined up with the rest of my brothers in front of the fireplace. And the only thing I remember is the gun metal when I had the shotgun in my mouth. And uh, he, was, he was pretty messed up. I think he was 23. He had me when he was 18, so he was pretty messed up. This is your father. This is my dad. And he had the shotgun in my mouth. And he told my mom, you choose. Choose which one of these kids I'm going to kill. And uh, I remember I was so scared, I peed the floor. And then the cycle just kept continuing. It went through life. And I didn't, I never stayed in anybody's house. I never did anything like that because I knew, middle of the night, man, my mom was going to scream. And I know she's going to scream my name. So from five years old on, I never left her side, took beatings with her, you know, day in and day out, you know. So I think I was 15, and we were coming back from Gillette, Wyoming, the big wrestling tournament there. And we get home, and my dad snagged the van and left us with the car, with, this, with the truck. Got, you know, we got three kids, four, actually, my sister and my mom, and we're sitting down at the racetrack in the truck like, He's going to take that van. It's got everything we own in it. He's going to take that van, and God knows where he's going to go, you know? Yeah. And so we stop. We come, we come home, and he pulls up. He went drinking is what he did. So he got enough courage. He got enough anger in him. And he comes home, and uh, he acted like he's in My mom's like, you know, you ain't taking that van. And so the fight started. She threw me the kiss. I got this, I got this man coming after me. I'm like, oh, you know. And, uh. At the time, I wrestled at, I wrestled 135 all the way through high school, won two state titles, and uh, runner-up. And uh, I mean, <laughs> tried to shoot in on him. I don't know, maybe it's just that old man strength or something, mm -hmm. right? Boom, boom. I'm it's starting. a pile driver. Yeah. I had it. I'm starting to lose it, I think. But, and then threw the keys back to my mom. And then she, uh, I remember he grabbed her arm and had her on the back and slamming her knee in the door. And it took an eight-year-old kid, man. My little brother was, uh, he had to call the cops. It's tough, isn't it? Yeah. It's OK. So it took uh, an eight-year-old kid to break the cycle. Yeah. All those beatings. Fucking. <sighs> the bruises on my ass cheeks. The black eyes on my mom's face. To get bare ass whipped by a fucking horse whip that jockeys use to damn near tear the hide off a horse is what I used to get beat with for running through the kitchen tripping the phone cord out of the wall. The days it would take. To heal that. And I swore 
when I was laying there. And if I ever had my kids, I would never do that to them. But to sit there and hear my mom scream my name, because my dad's choking the life out of her. And put, beating her into a corner. Punch daughter. So no, the loss is in the fucking cage. Yeah, they hurt, but you know what? They're nothing, and I fucking ain't kidding you when I say they ain't nothing. Like the wins that I've received, no fucking comparison. Frustration and knowing, you know? Pass up a lot of shit. Losing these key fights. Miss out on a lot of stuff. Can't cry about it, but. A lot more riding on this. I like to think. Can I be smart? Once, I mean, can I fight? The way I've done so many times, the way I've done in the gym, the way I've just I'm always empowering the other guy. I make him more than what he is. He's just a man, He's just a human being, man. So, like today, I'm gonna go in there and slow it down. And I'm gonna work on dismantling. Too old to be going out there trying to knock people out in the first two minutes of a fight while they're fresh. Too old for that. Like Randy, he don't ha he hangs around for a purpose to wear you out, to wear you out, to wear you out. You got to. I go back to luring people. I'm a late round. I'm going to come from off at Thoroughbred, not a front runner. It's just about getting that back, man, that front runner. How? 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 That's all there is, man. How, how, how do you get it back? Or is it going to come back? Man, this is, I feel incredible. I tell you, I don't know why I'm so fucking nervous right now. I don't know. I wonder if I've been nervous if I had to worry about bills and if I didn't have to worry about bills, if I didn't have to worry about all that shit.
I've always been that way about everything. I'll panic about it, panic about it, panic about it, panic about it. I'll make up shit. I'll turn a little mole hill into a huge mountain until it hits me right in the face. Then I turn around, I may be a pro about it. I get it done, I deal with it. I just wasted six fucking months worrying about it. Same thing with death. I'm gonna panic about it, panic about it, panic. Fucking ruin every day. Until day gets you, because I'm, I'm, I'm an idiot. Putting myself into a grave every day, fucking foot after one foot after the other. I mean, I'm walking towards something. I'm not walking away from it, you know, living life. I'm not walking towards it, living the next day, enjoying the next day. Running around, you know, looking forward to this. Fucking shell, man. So I don't really think about nothing. And that sucks. That sucks. Yeah, that's gonna. I don't want to be that guy, man. I don't want to be that guy that has to sit there and Take every goddamn pill that the doctor can give you just to numb you to the point that you can walk through life like a zombie. Because you can't deal with the fact that it'll all be over someday, you know? You can't appreciate the time that you're given. You're too busy counting down the fucking day you're gonna lose it. He showed his cards, brother. He showed his cards. Now go to work. Now go to work. Loading up and reaching. Come on, let's go. Don't post, don't paw. Don't post, don't paw. Let him touch. Let him touch. I can't tell you to do anything. I can't do I can tell you to keep your hands up. That's it. Let's go. Make it happen. Be gents now. Be gents. That's all I'm going to say. You know what to do. Let's go. Let's go. Quit posting. Quit pawing. Finish this round on your own. I'm right here. Let's go to work now. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. You see everything. Come on, Neo. Let's go, baby. Come on. Let's go. Don't let him walk in. He's just crowding himself, but still. They can get through something. Come on now. Oh, everything's flat now. Thank you for doing something. Let's mix it up now. Let's mix it up. And then bring it low, everything you got now. Different stuff, different stuff. Don't let him turn the corner now. Don't let him turn corners on you. Thank you, and there's, where's, my, where's my dropping low? Come back on it, come back on it. Oh, don't, don't rest on the fence now, come on. I know, I know you see me, come on. Come on, don't let people just play patty cake. Do some time, guys. Good round. Most people aren't as quick as you are having this technique. They let everyone pretend like they're ten out. Don't move on your level. That's my whole life. That's how I've been from day one. Either am I gonna be the little badass that's gonna just, just romp your ass because I was abused, take it out on you, steal everything you fucking own? Or am I gonna be the guy who's gonna be like his mom, fight hard, be nice, generous, support people rather than make fun of them? It's always a battle. 
that dude's a fucking battle. It's like, can I get off the battlefield one day? Can I just step out the war zone for a minute? Why can't I fucking just move? Keep the step. I don't care about 45 minutes of sprints and all that shit. I don't care. The lefty too, I mean, it was perfect. Good job, good job. I know I have to like it. That fucking looks so stupid. Everything right now. My goal is to weather the first round storm. Stop trying to be the, like we were right. talking about the other day. I can't be like, you know, Randy and them. I can't be that kid runs out to the store, shoot out the lights no, right no, in the no, first no, 30 no, seconds. No. Well, they're nice and breathy. Right, right, right. That's what I suffer. Right. But I'm good at, I'm a late round throw bread. I'm, la I'm two round, I'm right. round two But you still got to draw that you're line. Right. You got to draw Because you're pushing it, it back push from it. that line, from the onset. And then we actually no. couldn't find our way that's back to that line. Up. You know what I mean? No, and that's what I fucked up. I was trying to figure out where that line was, yep. what I can do yep. to stay exactly. seemingly safe, yep. stay out of the scrambles, but cause enough damage. Right. Leg kicks right. should right. have been in. Right. I mean, the three I right. threw, meeting. So I threw right. only three. It was no, awesome. I know, I know, I know. You know. But it was, it's ridiculous for me to go, do this, do that, do this. Yeah, I don't know, you know what my you, mind was. You, you know, knew, you you're right. You know? It's, it should I know just be the subtle shit. Chins. Don't fucking just stand there. Yeah. You know? A lot of phone today, a lot of bullshit. Don't you know fight what I mean? like Faber. Just, you know. There's a lot of phone, a lot of, a lot of everything else as far as my calling Bo, doing this stuff, you know what I mean? Up, you know what I mean? It's all right, it's all right. It's not fucked up. But we're learning from that. I'd rather this happen now. today, yeah. right? Because I'm here, all I can do is think about Sandy. And how embarrassed I am today. I mean, I just made it. He's going to be fucking happier than shit. He's going to go home all high, and I'm going to knock him off that horse. Sadly. Are you not getting enough of it that you're, it's not just drilled into your brain or something? You'd think it would be. It's in my brain. That's a, it was like being tired. I'm telling my feet to move. And you're just... <laughs> I don't know how to let myself go anymore. You know? One time I missed once and I started doubting. Missing and doubt. When am I? When am I ever gonna learn? Everybody. It ain't about money. When am I going to learn that? I guess that's where people I guess that's just where people retire. When the animals just stand in a minimum. I don't know how to shut the mic. I don't know how to sit there and watch the bills pile up. Why can't I just be happy with what I got? Cause it's a lot, you know, and I worked hard for it. It's life or death. It's your career. Oh, if you don't win this time, you're done. Frankly, whether we can close that gap. The truth of the matter is, is that, politically speaking, there may not be any reason.
Oh yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a good place. Yeah, call me when you guys get here, and uh, I'll, I'll we'll, we'll swoop you up. Jensical, like you put out a paper. Quit hiding, uh, Jens. Right I want you to entertain us. Tales of rev revelry. It's time for our workout day, publica. De publica. De publica. What time is it? In about 45 minutes. In 45 minutes, 1 o'clock? Yes, yeah. sir. That's what happens when you stay up till 4. 30. Partying. Hard. Rock star. Partying, dude. Just raging. Video games and inglorious bastards. No, man. Couldn't sleep. Couldn't sleep. Couldn't sleep. Great train. I Somebody trained into a fucking growler. I didn't realize I was snoring. I've never snored well, in my you life. Never do. Freight train. Ronnie doesn't realize he's waking the dead either. I, like, Trisha's a snorer, dude. I'm, I'm not. I oh, usually, but you I, are. I was sleeping on my back, so. And well, my nose was filled with blood. <laughs> oh shit. Ooh. Oh damn. Oh damn is right. Ooh, those are fancy. Let's check out these whites. Which ones are you wearing? The blacks or the whites? Put those shorts on. Let me see. Do you, I want to see how they look. They look like a badass. Oh, a little muscle farm. So which ones are you wearing? The white ones or the black ones? White ones preferably. She put it right where, I mean, right where I want it. Nice. Look at that, the cut. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I thought this is pretty cool. Dude, that looks yeah. sick. Dude, I didn't know they were doing that. You don't have his number, do you? Uh, yeah, I think so. As you say, take a picture and send it to him. Let him know this is how we represent the watches. And, they, and then these guys, good, they didn't want to get beat up, so that's as low as they went. Last time they went. Oh, it's tight. I didn't do a Boise State patch, which makes my suck. You see the front. Like that. So I'm saying. So you want me to do? You want me to train the knees? Let everybody see them. It's, it's up to you. It's up to you. Unveiling. Who's on the other side? That's Brian's. Oh, oh, sucker punch. And then they still throw out my jeepers. We missed it, dude. We we met Schwarzenegger at the coffee shop. No, what I missed was a coffee. Actually, we didn't. So I think really? Really? hot water and lemon, you dicks. What's that? It's work out twice, huh? Oh, yeah. Stefano Demir. I mean, no. What was his name? Really? Dude, that's days of our lives. That motherfucker's still alive. Damn. Why don't you use the phone with the detours and the, the extra track, it, it does. Telling me that Jesse James has won? No. No, no, no. See, every three months the James gang circles back to the vicinity of Liberty, Missouri, and they always pull a job before they return. Oh. Facebook mom where I took the wheelbarrow tire. My son is a year and a half. He's yeah. not even a year and a half. He's a year and two months. This is sick. He already punches the bag, so we had to get him little Muay Thai shorts and the gloves. Tony will tell you, he runs inside. He won't stop. It's all, he runs in the back all day to be around the gym. And he just watches. Next thing you know, he just starts doing the stuff. And we couldn't figure out what this was. He, he's and then he's like jumping rope. Because one day he had the rope and he's doing it. So now he, he goes, He's got a roly poly penguin. Pow, pow, pow. Kick, sprawl, bounce, punch, punch, punch. 
I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. 34 years old, I don't know if retirement's in my cards because it's, I'm not getting knocked to sleep where there's an ambulance picking me up or, you know, I'm making bad mistakes, you know, I go 25 with you drive, moving slow. I'm out of shape, he pot shots me like a good boy should, hit me right in the gut, caught me in the guillotine. Leonard took me on the head, but I was standing back up before the referee even waved it off. And the last one, I mean, gorgeous me shoots into a guillotine. But had I got out of that guillotine, I'd have been the first shot I took in five years. We could have had a lot of fun with stand up. So, yeah. you know, I mean, little things. But that's how I'm losing. I'm losing the dumb things because my mind wasn't right. And so that's the transition I had to make. Yeah, I got Tony Frickler next to me now. I'm back with what I consider my older brother, Ricky Christian. And I mean, we're just building and doing our thing. So regardless, you know, what happens fight-wise, I just know. But in my mind, I'm gonna absolutely obliterate whoever's in front of me right now because that's just the way I feel. I feel like a truck, I feel like a tank, and I'm ready just to blow over whatever's in front of me. And so more, you know, all the power to them. Let's, let's fight, that's all we do. Do you usually feel this good and confident before a fight? This I thing? haven't felt this good or confident in so long, but again, I made my mind right now. I feel good. I haven't felt like this in about four years. And like I said, I made all the right steps, all the right things. I've never, if you look back at me and Tony together, beat BJ Penn, choked out Cub Swanson, knocked out Dai Chow in Japan, knocked out Uematsu in a minute in Japan. Everything I've ever done great, Tony's been right there with me. Huh? You feel a little, you feel all right. You feel a little hot today. You starting to feel like no carbs, shit like that. Yeah, I'm starting to feel like no explosion. Yep. Well, I guess and yeah, guess what? That's just fucking your body fights. When they're making you do this, this dude needs to pay. So now, hey, son. How you doing, brother? Good to see you. Good to see you, brother. Now's the time, though. Now's the time. Just keep That's our game pace on, you know. Fred, Fredson's on our side. He's Fredson's on our side. You know what I mean? But everyone wants to be Jensen's friend right now. You got a work to do. They don't mind if you're a little quiet right now, you know what I mean? Right now is when you're starting to feel it. You know, so let's just feel it. You don't want to be miserable. Man. But we can be a little, little tight. Time to be grumpy. A little bit. You don't need to be grumpy. I need to be grumpy. But you need there's to be a different, a there's bit. a fine line between loving this, and like I said, I loved it, but also you're making you sure your mind's right. Yep. Get a little focus, get a little focus. It's just, it sucks with the practice. I can't. If these workouts get to me because they're humbling, it's like yeah, but, dragging, you know what I mean? Yeah, but I mean, the there, was never, there was never a weight cut that I felt that I felt good. I'm in the room the week oh, of five. Of I, Pat, am I in shape? Am I in shape? He goes, yes, you're just cutting weight, dude. This is what it yeah, feels like yeah. on Wednesday. No, I know, I know. Oh, fuck. But I didn't even catch my breath. Yeah. I thought I was in shape. Well, yeah, that was a week well, ago no, when you were full But water. the irony is, the irony is, dude, it's been 25 minutes, and I'm not bouncing like I was in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, so we're still yeah. going 25 minutes, and I'm... I'm like, I haven't had a carb since Monday. I uh, came in at 160 off the plane. It's fine, and I did one workout and I was 153. So I probably held a lot, you know, just flying and all that stuff. But we did our run and everything. I was 155 today starting workout. So I'm just keep hitting these workouts hard cardio wise. And then go have my meals, you know. And I think about the fight when we're training, but for the most part, I just think about relaxing. And I like to use the weight because I know I'm gonna make it, but it's just fun to focus on. Because if I just start trying to run the fight over my head, then you're gonna start getting the sleepless nights and you know the jitters. And because you'll find a thousand ways you're gonna win it, you'll find a thousand ways you're gonna lose it. You want to keep playing, you know. I don't want to be mentally busted by the time I get out there because I'm like, God, I'm so tired of thinking about this fight. So right now I like to go through my phases and right now it's just everybody's coming around and visiting and you know, we're still in game plan mode. Ready, ready, ready? Yeah, let's get a workout. Record. I'm coming. Oh, that's one man. Uh, you want some right, mango? Want what do you want? Would you rather banana? Flattened banana or, or flattened mango? I ain't have none of that dried fruit. It's, why can't you have fruit? Plugs you up, man. You gotta read those ingredients. A hundred percent fruit with no sulfur and no sugar, no additives? No way.
Um, do you want to read the label? One of them is called simply banana, um, if you read the label. And the only ingredient is banana. And the other one is nothing, oh, I'm sorry, nothing but banana flattened. And the ingredient is banana. He's so stupid. Ingredients, plural, bananas with an S. I'm sorry, more than one banana got smashed into this motherfucker. Let me see. 18 grams of sugar. Which is what's in fruit. Apricots. They're good sugars, though. Or, how about this one? Look at the keyword. Just mango. Hold on. Let's check the ingredients. You want to read that for He's me? He's going to say just again. He says just again. Uh, dried mangoes. They got 20 it. grams of sugar. The mangoes are sugary. They're good yeah. for you. That's good sugar. And you know you love this, dude. Don't try not to you don't. Trader Joe, he's a man. Let me try one more. Dude, it's the best. It's great. It's actually really good. I, I love this shit. Grab one here. Yeah. Get flipping rough with it, bud. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There you go. Hey, hey, hey. You got what it. you got there? There you go. What you got there, Harry? Hold out. I'm sorry. Cut a piece of meat. Once it touches your lips, you'll love it. Coming, I'm in a cab. So all I gotta do is come in here and get on the scale and I'm done. Ah, shit, that's right, so I need my shorts too. I'll do the shorts. I mean, I can bring the shorts in the band, but I have to go to my room real quick. Always gonna be in the room. Always gonna wanna make it me. I'm that guy. Single bullshit. So nine dollars there. Oh, thank you. No, thank you. Appreciate it. Welcome to the Renaissance. Watch this shit. We ain't gonna make this easy. What's up, man? Who sent you over there, boss? Huh? Who sent you over there? I don't know where. Who told you you had to go over to Nobody told me I had to go over there. I got my oh. own boots over there. Am I allowed to ah. push anything of my own? So that was your, so that was your own doing? Yeah. Oh. She's probably the 
card. See that? That's what happens when you when when you when you when you hold it in a, in a ledger, it just you know it just becomes salty. This is what we're looking like, baby. I bought the ones that just came out, the brand new ones last Wednesday. I bought a box of those, two boxes for like sixty-four bucks. What'd you say you were upstairs? Yesterday I looked, they're one hundred seventy-two dollars a piece already. Wow. For the unopened boxes, people are just they're pretty yeah, it's funny. I thought I had a cool idea. Yes, like, what you know, I, I don't want cards because we're not thinking you're looking at 50. I'll tell you what I'll do. So we have a two Why pound difference on the scale. I could like frame the sheet head What scale are you using? Do me a favor and sit down, sit so down on there, face me, cross your legs. I've been like, using it the same time. time. Mm -hmm. You'll see, you'll see the break. You'll see a break. They just had them all going the same way. Yeah, that'd be cool if it was all like, yeah, yeah, I got the uh. That's the break. Autograph on course, I open it up so and you're, get yeah, so you're looking at 50. Brother, it has to be. Are they two pound mm -hmm. different? I mm -hmm. got 52. Ready. Anderson one is cool. Anderson said they're sweet, dude. I was into baseball cards my whole life. Pieces. Uh, yeah, over there. 3:30. We got to be here at three o'clock. Down here, right here on this okay. floor. Okay. Three o'clock. What? I can't, man. I'm six pounds over and I gotta be here by three o'clock. I don't even have two and a half hours to cut this. You're not going anywhere. What up, gents? How you doing? What's going on? What's going on with you, brother? Pull me aside. Joe and the rest of them said it's not going nowhere. Well, they pulled me aside before you got there and read me the fucking riot act, dude. They're like, where's your brother? I was like, the Arnold's? They're like, who told him he had to go over there? I was like, I, I don't know. I figure somebody did. And they were like, dude, you need to fucking get control of this situation now. The WEC is pulling the plug on him doing anything. They want him here, focused. They want no excuses, nothing getting in his way. They want 100% just locked down. So Jen's just wanted me to let you know in case anybody's, you know, pissed off at him or whatever for not being at a booth or something, I guess. So it's all this stupid fucking shit, dude. Can't we just go back to Lake Charles, fucking Louisiana? The only thing they gave you when you walked in was fucking vouchers of the country kitchen or whatever, and then told you basically to drop dead until the fight started. All this other bullshit's gotten too fancy for me, buddy. I just want you to fight. Let me just fast forward this shit. I hurt too bad to be weighing this fucking heavy. <laughs> fucking tired. Been sleeping like shit. I got to feel like everybody looks at me not so much in pity. Just, you know, hey, it's the old man. <laughs> you know, I hate when people say they're going to retire me, shit like that. It's like, dude, that's like saying you're going to kill me. And it, it does, it makes me mad. Spend every day training. College, high school, elementary. Three o'clock, wrestling practice. Every day, my life. Three o'clock, training. Since then, morning sessions, afternoon sessions. I take my two weeks of breathing, then I gotta get back to training. But now all of a sudden, what the are you gonna do to me when you tell me I got nothing to train for other than just to train? I don't know if I can do that. I always had a purpose. What do you fucking do? You're a competitor. You all you know you do when you're this young? Look at that, bang, most people are f fucking old, skin gray. I am done and I look like this. I'm done and I can still push a car for half a mile if I wanted to. I'm done and I could bench, you know, 200 and almost 260 pounds. Seriously? Most people are done, they're 65 years old, 70. They can barely put their fucking shoes on. Okay, now they're done. Now they need to relax and sit by the beach. Shit like me, men are fucking prime. And we're done. How do you adjust to that? I ask anybody out there, how do you adjust to that?
isn't about isn't about the money. It's about it's all you know. You trained for it, and you love it, and you got an eternal clock that tells you. Today, you know, you're going to go out there, you're going to run, you're going to bust your ass, you're ready to listen to somebody. They're going to tell you what to do, and you know it, so you do it. And you don't ask, you do it 100%. But I told, it was like I told my wife today, which is ironic, I'm sitting there and I go, what do I do? How do I learn to figure this shit out? How do I learn to be a businessman? How do I learn to be an everyday individual? How do I learn that I'm training for no reason other than to just be in shape? How do I learn to enjoy what I'm doing without that competitive edge? When I feel like this, but I have to retire because I can't mentally put it together. How do you do it? How do you spend the rest of your life accepting that? How do you learn to die twice? And that's where I'm sitting. How do you make it past the first one knowing that you got to do it again?
you wear your jacket, do you want to wear Ken's jacket? Why? In case you said it. Oh, you guys are all thinking. It's going to be a good one. Three rounds with Javier Showtime Vasquez and his opponent, Jans Lilibo Palmer! One forty-five and a half for Culver. One forty-five and a half. I knew the boys had to grow up sometime. Right? Yeah, just following you around. Oh, I appreciate it very much. Can be a little get quick picture? Yeah, I know. For sure. Uh, 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 no worries. No worries at all. Yeah, come on in. Unless you catch me, Johnny, hanging down the face or something. Yeah. Gentlemen, here, guys. Jump in. Let's fight. Jump in right here. I'll just uh, trust me. I'm a whole pro. Oh, yeah, right, dude. Right. Been doing this I'm for a long time. Other than that, man. I'm just trying to break that streak. I bet you turn it off. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. How you doing? Good? Yeah. 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 I've never taken so much joy in sitting on a Japanese toilet. Dude, the first time I went over there, he's like, Evo, come in here. I'm like, what, dude? I walk in there sitting on this. Like, why? It's warm. It's warm. It's a dwarf. And then I hit the bidet and I was like, oh, no. I started using, I started, I felt dirty. So I started using the toilet paper. And Jen then I was felt like, guilty because he enjoyed it. Dude. Yeah, I did. I had a little shot. It was like a little animal. It was like a little animal. Tony and I have never been in the corner together where he didn't just absolutely fuck smash someone. So it's going to happen again tonight. There's nothing anyone can do about it. It's God's will. It's beautiful. <laughs> Like really hurt, hurt, hurt him. Hurt him. Hurt him bad. We've never even been close to a corner where somebody didn't get destroyed, huh? Is this true? This is true. Tony and I have never walked down the aisle with him together where somebody didn't get destroyed. Hey, Uy Masu, DJ, Pan, all of them, baby. We know. Me and Tony know things about Lil Evil that Lil Evil might not know about Lil Evil. And it's Fortuna smiles upon him when we walk him down that aisle, baby. Yeah. <laughs> David Lee Ross back for more than one <laughs> night, too, dude. He's back. The band is back
I guess what people dig about me is I relate to them. Yet I stand up on this pedestal to fight and I come right the fuck back off it. Where most of them stay up on that pedestal. Worship me. Send me your money. Oh yeah, like it's a chore to sign a picture. I can't go to the mall because everybody keeps running. I'm like, I'm gonna go to the mall and fucking hang out with everybody. What's up? Hey. That's my difference. Am I something special? No, it's just me. I fought for a different reason. I fought because it's all I knew. I fought because it was my life. I love training. I enjoy it. But at the same token, if you were to sit next to me, I'll hang out with you. You probably want to get up and leave me. Be like, damn, just kidding. Shut up. Man, let's go. Or I can look at the poor kids and go, yeah, man, I know how you feel. It sucks getting laughed at because you're fucking closing and as cool as the other guy. You know what I mean? So my values, yeah. But the fact that I share my values out loud. I'm one of the baddest men on the planet. I was a world champion, pound for pound at one point, one of the, probably, I was top one or two best fighter in the world. And I'll cry. And I'll tell you that I'm sad. And I'll talk to you about depression. And I'll tell you about anxiety attacks. And I'll share with you my fears for our children. How I'll step up on that pedestal to fight and step right back off. How people ask me, oh, you're famous. I think I'm probably the only person on the planet known by as many people as I am or whatever. You know, people, oh, you're famous. No, I ain't famous. And I mean it when I say it. I go, famous people are rich. Famous people have bodyguards and they go, you know, they slide off in the hidden places. I'm just popular. That's it. I'm an everyday fucking dude. People just know my name. I'm just popular. Get in there, I, me, I start, start thinking about where I came from. I start thinking about everything I've been through and I start going crazy. I just want to perform. I just want to perform in front of these people. I just want to get things done. And all the while, I'm just thinking, man, just capitalize. You come from nothing. You came from this. Nobody said you could do this. You got this. You're working. Fuck it. Hit it. Be smart. Hands up. Hands up. Don't get caught. Don't leave your arms out. Don't get stuck in things. Now you put your gear on. You got your shorts on. Sweating. Now it's hitting. Now you like everything's welling up. And I, at that point, I got to turn on, I got to cry because I got so much built up in me. The only way I can release it is I got to cry. So. You can hear the other guy's music because I'm always going last because I was the world champion. So I'm always going last. So I'm just sitting there going, come on, man, get after it. Just get after it, get after it. And on. And and all of a sudden, they go, okay, James, it's time, it's time. And the cameras get up in front of your face, and they poof, bust that curtain open, and people start screaming, and your music starts, and then it's just <laughs> boom, like you're about to go underwater. <laughs> Take the fucking plunge. Can't go back. That's what it's like, man, every time. Every time. You know. Then you go out there, and you don't know what's going to happen. It's already predetermined. It's not. You just fight your heart out. Train hard, you fight hard, do what you can, shit happens. Yeah, the biggest battle was you went out there.
Am I done? Am I done? I ain't hanging nothing up yet. I've heard naysayers talking, and I. 